So the Sonic Crystals project is about using these special looking structures to absorb or block the sound. It's a problem in, in all outdoor concerts that you end up potentially annoying the people close by. All stages when you design the PA system, you try to focus the coverage, right, so that you don't have so much spillover. And that's of course what your first solution should be, right? But we're looking into whether can this provide some extra insulation. Well, sonic crystals is a structure where you have uh, objects in a, in a regular grid, and because of this periodicity of the grid, that creates a special behavior, and you can see through the structure, but it's still it's able to block quite effectively certain frequencies. So the idea is that if this works, potentially that could be also used as something you could put up to block you know, one stage from interfering with another stage. Well, let's, let's test this out and see if, how much of a difference it can make. I'm standing here in front of some sonic crystals that have been built by students at Danish Technical University. We are interested in seeing what does it take to make a, a really practical effect on the sound? And so the festival was interested in trying this as well. And so this is really sort of a demonstration project where the festival actually commissioned an artist to compose a piece, knowing that the crystals would have a different effect on the sound in different directions. And we built some of different sizes to interfere at selected frequencies, and then a piece was composed so that people could hear the effect of that. The students built some prototypes, which they measured in their anechoic chamber, and they got about 20 degree of rejection for about a third of an octave. Those were some smaller crystals, and so these are larger. We're, we're getting a very similar amount of rejection out here on the festival grounds. What I found interesting about sonic crystals is that it's something that prevents certain sounds from passing through, but if you were to scale it larger, potentially people could walk through it. There's a lot of theoretical work in the literature and we wanted to try something small at first and see, well, okay, well really how practical is this? And it's also interacting with our measurements between the stages and we're seeing some indications that the sound that goes between stages extends pretty high in frequency. So it's, it's not just the subwoofers necessarily that are bleeding between the stages something that came about as a part of building this sonic crystal here in the festival is we saw that this effect that the audience has on subs on the ground, it might be useful to think of it in the same way as the effect that the sonic crystal has on sound in magnitude and phase. And that could help us prepare for and address that phenomenon when it happens. What we tried to do in 2019 is try to learn what we can from the sonic crystals idea. We wanted to see if we could reduce the leakage to the surrounding areas and by doing so, uh, creating a much more direct interacting stage performance with the audience and the artists. To block the frequencies that we really are interested in blocking being very low frequencies, we have to have gigantic structures to do so. So it might not be practical, but the findings of this research proves that it is possible to reduce certain frequencies. The partnership with Maya Sound is created on multiple arenas, one being research, one being education, and one being quality assurance. And the research part is extremely important to us because it gives us valuable information on areas that we know of, but maybe not have any insight into yet. Through research and development, we take another step in trying to secure our position as one of the leading festivals in Europe and will continuously develop the quality of the festival and the audience experience.